What's up guys? Today we are going to talk about survival mode in your business. And uh, it's not a good place to be in. If you are in survival mode right now, you might be thinking, I'm in survival mode, you know, in production. I'm in survival mode because I'm taking on whatever jobs come my way. I'm in survival mode right now in sales because I'm pricing jobs lower than I should because I don't know where the next job is coming from. I'm in survival mode in hiring because I'm hiring anyone with a pulse. Uh, you're going to like this episode. We're going to hammer out these issues and hopefully give you a strategy to help get you out of survival mode. The big question you need to ask yourself every day is, do I own a job or do I own a business? And unfortunately, the majority of contractors out there own a job. That's right. They're a slave to their own business. But the other side of the fence is so much greener. It's so much better. And that's when you're finally fully in control of your destiny, your freedom, your time. And that's what Contractor Secrets is about. It's about taking back our time, building a business with systems, standards, values, procedures, putting yourself in the driver's seat. And that's what it's about. So I'm excited. I'm happy to have you here. Let's dive into the Contractor Secrets podcast. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Contractor Secrets podcast. In today's episode, I want to talk to you about your role as a business owner and what it is that it's going to take in order for you to get out of survival mode. Now, what I've recognized is a lot of us are still in survival mode. This is the same way of thinking that we thought when we first started our business. And by that, I mean everything that we do, we do because we have to do it. In other words, we hadn't hadn't sat back and did what we needed to do before we needed it to be done. Now, let me give you an example. You're going to be like, oh yeah, that does make sense. Hiring. How many of us hire out of survival mode? How many of us really only look for help when the help is needed to be looked for? Okay. When we do and make decisions in survival mode, we don't make the best decisions as business owners. Okay. Let me give you an example. You have a big job that you just secured and one of your guys decides they don't want to come to work anymore. You have to fire them. And you know that you need help on this job. Are you making a hiring decision in the same way that you're going to be making a hiring decision when you don't need the help? Are you going to take your time with the process take them through the form, ask them the right questions through a phone interview, set the set the date and time where you want the in-person interview, run the background check, do a working interview. Are you operating like that every single time? Or have your last few hires been out of survival mode? Hey, can you start tomorrow? Or hey, um, you know, can you fill this out? And then, uh, yeah, why don't you just come to the job tomorrow and we'll give you a try. Or, you know what, man, we can skip the in-person interview. Just just, just come on uh, tomorrow, man. We could use the help. Now, some of us may get lucky. We might get somebody that actually works out doing that, and I get that. But that's not a system that we want to make sure is a standard, okay? We want to make sure that whatever we're doing in our business can be, can be replicated, can be done by someone else. And that is everything within our business. So that is something that survival mode is creating for us, which is an inconsistent process. Now, yes, sometimes that does work, but more often than not, that's when we run into issues with our hiring. That's when we run into issues with people that wind up causing us more stress than good. Okay. How about when we take on jobs out of survival mode because we didn't do a good enough job investing in marketing ahead of time to ensure that that flow came in? What happens? What do we wind up doing in survival mode when it comes to, hey, I'm running out of jobs. I need to make a decision on you know, how I'm going to approach jobs within the next few days. So anyone that calls me, I'm going to do whatever job they need done. Okay. That is survival mode. In other words, somebody may call you and ask you to do cabinets if maybe you're an, an interior next to your house painting company. But because you're in survival mode, because you know that you don't have work, because you know that you need to pay bills, you have to take on that job, which you know you're maybe not the best at. It's going to put stress on your team, put stress on yourself, and could cause more harm than good. Okay. That is survival mode when it comes to sales and maybe you're pricing jobs out of survival mode. Maybe you're pricing jobs way lower than you should. And you find yourself pretty much working for nothing. I don't know if that's happened to you, but I know what that feels like. And I know that it's not fun. So when it comes to hiring and when it comes to sales, 
we're in survival mode. And my concern is, is that if you don't put proper systems in place to get you out of survival mode in those areas, you're going to live in survival mode. And one thing that I equate to survival mode more than anything is stress. Stress is survival mode. It is everyone is in a panic. There's no peace in the company. There's no peace in the business owner, which translates to the workers, the employees, the people around you, the customers feel it. And maybe I'm talking to somebody right now that's in survival mode in their business. And I want you to know that there's a reason you're there. And unless you pump the brakes, unless you sit down and actually make a drastic change by implementing some strategy into your business, then you are not going to get out of the survival mode. And you might be thinking, you know, why can't I keep good employees? Why can't I figure this thing out? And it's probably because you're putting a lot of stress on your team by taking on whatever job comes your way, by not really knowing your numbers and your margins, by not being able to confidently give raises when raises are due, by not being able to create a team environment because you're afraid to make a hire because you're not sure how much money you're going to make. And, and there's just so much chaos going on. And I think that if you just understood that you're in survival mode, I think that word, those two words alone, putting a label on how your business actually be ran, I think that's going to help you make the decision to switch. Okay. So let's talk about getting out of survival mode. So one of the first things that you need to understand as a business owner is that your job is quality control. It's not control. Okay. A lot of us are in control of everything. We want to control all the jobs and we want to control how everyone does everything throughout their day because we're so afraid that they're going to make a mistake and ruin the reputation of our company, ruin our, our standards. You know, for some of you listening to this, it is actually like, it is actually the hardest thing in the world for you to actually like leave your team alone and let them do a job for a day. And you know, that's survival mode in production, actually. So in other words, like the way you see it is you're one mistake away from your whole company just, you know, being ruined because whoever you put in charge on that job cannot do uh, the job to the standard of which that you would want it done. So you believe it or not, by you going to every job and feeling that you need to be there for every decision, every step of the way, your your business production side is operating in survival mode. Okay, so let's talk about how to get out of survival mode. First of all, we, had, we need to understand that topic again, which means that your job as a business owner is not control. It's quality control, which means you are controlling the quality, which means that you oversee things, but you also need to check the end result. So in other words, somebody who is in a factory focusing on quality control, yes, they check in to make sure the machines are operating properly, but their job is to see what the end result comes out to be and ensure that before that end result gets delivered to a customer, that that end result is of the standard of which uh, the company represents. And that is what you should focus on. You should focus on is, I need to be here in the beginning and I need to be here at the end. And if you can just focus on that, you're going to free yourself up a lot. And I think that it all starts with production. I think that the reason that you may operate in survival mode is because most of your time is spent on the actual projects, which you've heard me say many times that, you know, focusing on the project is not growing your company. Okay. Focusing on the project is a result of growth that has already been created through sales and marketing. So essentially you're just fulfilling the the result of growth. So where your focus should then be after you remove yourself from the production, which I have plenty of podcasts and I would love to talk to you about it. I'm not going to go too deep into that. I just wanted you to recognize these things is that you need to focus on the actual sales, the marketing and the hiring. Okay. These are three major areas of your business that require its own strategies, its own time, its own system, its own process. Okay. First of all, it all starts with the marketing, okay? Because if you don't have people to sell to, then your sales process can never improve, right? It's all about repetition. You need reps. If you are listening to this and you're looking at your schedule for how many estimates you have within the next week, and you have the, the answer to that question is zero to two, then you need to pay for someone to help you with marketing, whether it is an individual or whether it is a company, because you clearly cannot do it on your own. And that is okay. Guess what? I can't do it on my own. 
I cannot market effectively. I need to pay someone to do this for me so I can focus on the operations of my business because you know what? It's worth it to me because either I pay it in the form of money or I'm going to pay it in the form of time. And anytime there is a trade between whether or not you're going to pay with your money or your time as a business owner, you want to lean toward paying with the money because the time is invaluable. You can't get it back. Okay. So for me, marketing is an area that I need to send as much money as possible so I can get as many reps in, in terms of sales. We are in a law of averages business, which means the more people we sit in front of, the greater chance that we have to sell jobs. So in other words, if you sit in front of a hundred people that want estimates done for your service, you're going to sell between 10 and 75 jobs, depending on how good you are. And the goal is if you sell 10 jobs out of a hundred, the goal is for you to increase that number as you get better and better at sales. Now, guess what? Sales is worthless without production. And when it comes to production, you need to have a system of hiring and a system of production that allows you to maintain the demand of sales. So what this comes down to is a balance. Okay. We talked about these three things. We talked about marketing. We talked about sales. We talked about hiring and how they all go hand in hand. And essentially getting out of survival mode means you are planning ahead of time. You are preparing ahead of time. So when the storms in business come, you are prepared. Okay, guys, a quick story. You know, I live in Florida, hurricanes all over the place. All right. Usually about around September, um, you know, there's a big storm that comes. There's a big hurricane that, that makes its way through, you know, and, and it's all over the news and it's coming and it's going to be the end times. And it's like the craziest thing ever. I think I have a podcast a while back. I did on one. I'm not sure. Anyway. So as soon as it comes, like I'm in survival mode. I didn't store up a bunch of gas. I didn't, you know, store up kayaks and life jackets. I didn't, I didn't get the, I, I honestly didn't. I didn't get the storm shutters. Okay. You know, all right. You know, that's a risk I'm willing to take, you know, for me. But again, that time period of survival mode absolutely sucks. I mean, you can't get any gas. The food shelves are gone. Um, you know, and you're thinking to yourself, man, I wish I would have prepared, you know, every single time. And then the storm goes away and then you're like, whatever. Okay. Now that's different when it comes to a storm coming. Okay. And, and being in Florida, you know, we're kind of used to it. So it's not like this major thing, but just, I couldn't imagine living in my business with that mindset at all times. And I know that's where a lot of you are. So what would we do if we wanted to get out of survival mode? Imagine that being every day, you know, imagine that being every day that it feels like a storm is coming. Like eventually, like we're going to get hit with this storm. And maybe some of you feel like that in your business. And, and how would we prepare? Well, if I was actually in a storm and I knew that a storm was coming every day, uh, living in my home, well, the first thing I would do is I would try to make sure that I had enough gas in case I had to leave. Okay. So in terms of gas, you know, I would go and, and find containers and I would, you know, go anytime that I found a container, um, I would fill it up with gas. Okay. So that's an easy thing to do. So the next thing would be, all right, well, I got to make sure I have enough food and I would store food to make sure that I had food and I would come up with a process that made it easy for me to get gas and made it easy for me to get food. So, you know, I can get to the store and I can get the food, you know, and, and I'm using these analogies to help you that first of all, you got to identify what you need and then you come up with a system that helps you get to that need as quickly as possible. So let's look at your business. Well, the first thing you need is sales. So how do you get sales? Well, you need gas, you need fuel. Um, that's, that's what we consider sales and we need, you know, food, which we consider lead and, you know, whatever guys, you guys are getting the point here. So essentially we'd identify that we need sales and in order to get sales, we need leads. So well, you have two options. You either go to the store and get the leads yourself, or you find out that there's a service that will provide you the lead because your goal ultimately is to get the sale. So my suggestion is first thing, eliminate the trial and error of trying to find leads on your own. You know, look, let's just admit this first and foremost, if you own a business, a painting business or a flooring business or a contracting business, you know, I'm going to bet that you're not a marketer. I'm going to just put that out there, okay, that you're not a marketer. You could be, but, you know, the vast majority of us are not marketers. Okay, so stop trying to be a marketer. Just be a business owner. 
Okay. Just, just stop trying to be a marketer and, and just understand that, you know, if you're going to get sales that you need somebody to bring you the leads. Okay. You know, yes, you can, you can do your own marketing and all this stuff, but again, anything that you spend your time doing is taking time away from another thing that you could be doing. So my suggestion is if we, if we are trying to get out of survival mode, we need to pay someone to find us leads and make sure we have leads every single week. They should be hitting your inbox. If you have drip jobs, they should be going right into your drip jobs account. Okay. To be followed up with. Right. So that's, that's the first decision we need to make is that we are not marketers. I'm not going to try to market. It's going to be a waste of time. It probably won't be done effectively. Let me pay someone to do it. Let them handle it. Let them figure it out. Okay. If you need someone to help you with leads, reach out to me directly and we can talk about that. Number two, sales. I need to get better at sales. I have to understand that in order to keep this machine running, people need to give me money and we have to create a transaction. So when I get that lead, first of all, I have to understand that my priority as a business owner is to be in a sales role right now. My priority as a business owner is to not only manage the sales side, but also oversee production because I have to make this, this decision to get out of the production. So in terms of sales, how do I get out of survival mode? Well, what I need to do is I need to make sure that my pipeline is far enough out where I'm not in a panic and I have confidence knowing that although I, I may not have you know, all the jobs that I want for the upcoming weeks, I know that my marketing is going to bring me the job types that we are best at. So I don't have to feel forced to take on all the different jobs that come my way through word of mouth or through random channels. I can actually focus on the one or two job types that are most profitable for me and that my team really enjoys doing. Because once we figure that out, then I can go to my production side and I can say, okay, we do this type of work. This is what we specialize in. And when I bring in somebody new from my new hiring process by taking my time and I'm not in a hurry looking for the most specialized individual, I can actually take somebody that has hardly any experience and put them into my system because we only do a certain amount of things. Okay. Let me ask you this guys real quick. And, and another analogy for you. Why do you think restaurants have a menu? All right. Think about that for a second. Why do restaurants have a menu? And the reason is, is because the menu is tied to the system. The menu is tied to what inventory they have. The menu is tied to what skill set their chef has and the sous chef and the line cook and all that. That system that they created allows them to operate effectively because they only allow you to order certain things. Next time you go to a restaurant and you look at their menu and let's say on that restaurant, it does not have fettuccine Alfredo. I guarantee you everyone back there in that kitchen could make fettuccine Alfredo. And you know what? That restaurant could probably put a custom order in to allow the software that they have to charge you for it. But there's a reason that they're going to tell you no. And the reason is, is because adding chicken Alfredo or fettuccine Alfredo to the menu during a busy dinner service is going to create chaos. Okay. And that's where you need to really understand that although it's a different business type, the idea is synonymous, okay? Survival mode is taking on every type of job. Survival mode is pricing out jobs lower than you should have to because you're running out of work. Survival mode is rushing through hiring because you don't have a system in place. And all of this can be avoided if you just have confidence in your marketing and confidence in your ability to make sure that leads come in every single week that want the exact type of job, job types that you specialize in. And uh, I believe that if you guys all commit to understanding that in order to get to your goal in terms of sales, there has to be some external help. Stop trying to do everything. Stop trying to control everything. Just control the quality and you'll have a much better business experience. So I hope you got something out of that. I love the topic of survival mode. I hope that you're not in it. And I hope that if you are in it, that this gave you some insight to help get you out of it. Um, if you want any insight on who to, who to hire for your leads, uh, reach out to me directly. Um, you know, and of course, guys, you know, I have the hiring course. I have the sales course. If you want any of those, uh, just reach out to me, uh, and I'll shoot you the links to grab them. Uh, but I hope that helps guys. Thank you as always for listening to the contractor secrets podcast. I hope that you take some of the information today and, uh, throw it right into your business and it gives you, uh, gives you results. So I look forward to checking in with you on the next episode. 
Drip Jobs CRM is finally here. That's right. So Drip Jobs is an automation platform for contractors, home service professionals. It's going to automatically follow up with your customers. It's going to allow you to send invoices, estimates. It's going to allow you to send out blast marketing emails to individuals based on where they are in the buying process. This software is next level. And I'm reaching out to you. You're a listener of this podcast, and I want you to be one of the first ones to give it a shot. So if you want to see what Drip Jobs can do for your business, I'd love for you to head over to dripjobs.com, sign up for a free demo, and get your team involved, and let us sit with you and show you how powerful this software is. It's going to save you time, it's going to make you money, and you're going to love the features that are built into Drip Jobs. So if you want to check it out, head over to dripjobs.com. And we will give you first priority being a podcast listener uh, to be one of the very first to try out Drip Jobs in your home service business. I'm super excited to share that with you, and I'll catch you on the next episode.